Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our time of worship here in church. Those of you that are watching online or perhaps later on YouTube, we do welcome you to this time of worship. We're going to be using the green books and we'll be starting on page 18. And at section two, we say these words together. Loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence, that we may praise you now with our lips and all the day long with our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sometimes we can be blind to the fact that God loves us and forgives us when we get things wrong. And that's why when we come to worship, we take an opportunity at the beginning of our service where we want to say sorry to God. We're reminded that God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. And we're going to be using words at section two on page 19. Almighty God, our Father, we come to you with humble hearts to confess our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us, save us and help us for behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us, for failing you, not only by what we do, but also by our thoughts and words. Father, forgive us, save us and help us, for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your dear son, Jesus. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Father, we have failed you often and humbly ask your forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for today, which is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue on page 20 and section 1. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth shall proclaim your praise. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let everything we do or say be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. We are going to praise God. We're going to sing two songs, so you might like to find the first one, which is 322, and also the second one is 165. So if you want to keep a, a finger in either page of your hymn book, and um, we'll go from there.
As we stand in a moment of quietness, perhaps in the silence or out loud to encourage one another, give thanks that the faithful one, the ageless one, is our rock of peace, that we can depend on the Lord. Perhaps you need him at the moment as a rock because you're going through a time of trouble. Just in a moment of quietness, allow those words to enrich our worship. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us as a church fellowship and community and to us as individuals. We praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you like to sit down and Oliver is going to come and read our Bible reading for us. This morning's Bible reading is taken from Acts, and it's Acts 9, verses 36 to 43, and you can find this on the back of the notice sheet. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. 
In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became ill and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upper room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. Peter went with them. And when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turn, turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and held her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. This is the word of the Lord. Now I'm going to invite Jill as she comes and opens up that passage of scripture to us. Good morning. Shall we pray? Father, take my lips and speak through them and take our minds and our hearts that your word may take root, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tabitha. Not only mentioned really once in this story, but in Jesus' day, Jewish and Roman society were largely male-dominated. However, there are a few women mentioned in the Bible whose lives were transformed by Jesus. Some were well known by name, others remained anonymous. I'm sure you can bring some to mind. But today we come to a lady who, with two names, Tabitha in Aramaic and Dorcas in Greek. A lady who did not meet Jesus personally, but whose life was transformed by him. I hope you will be inspired and encouraged by her giving spirit. So let's consider her legacy, her loss, and her Lord. We know little about Tabitha. Her reputation was made from something as simple as sewing clothing for the poor. It could just as easily have been cooking. It seems this was her one talent not particularly remarkable, you might think. And yet, and yet, Tabitha surpasses every other woman in the Bible. She is the only one to be called a disciple. Do you find that surprising? You might never have considered sewing as an important a gift, say as teaching or prophecy. But the fact might... The fact is that she is the only one called a disciple. This should, not teach us, this should teach us not to despise the gift of help or undervalue practical serving. Tabitha was a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. She opened her heart to Jesus and that changed everything. The word disciple means learner, a follower, and that became her motivation in sewing clothes. It was out of gratitude for Jesus that she dedicated her one gift to him. Can we do that? 
This is the reason, I'm sure, that Tabitha was always doing good and helping the poor. Because she was following the example of Jesus, following the prompting of Jesus to, good, to do good and to help those in need. She could sew, and so she sewed to the best of her ability. She was sewing for Jesus. Can you sew? I can't. But we're all good at something. We all have something we enjoy doing. What do you enjoy doing? What energizes you? What lights your fire? What floats your boat? What are you passionate about? And are you channeling that gift or passion for Jesus? What are we doing for Jesus? It can be as simple as sewing, not that I call that simple, but those who are good at it might think it's just one of those things. Or baking, or fixing, or driving. True faith expresses itself not in words, but in deeds. The highest calling in Christian ministry is to care in practical ways for the most vulnerable in society, especially widows and orphans. In previous generations, ports like Joppa would have had a high proportion of widows, more than other towns, for during bad weather, fishermen, merchant and naval seamen were often shipwrecked and drowned. Their wives and children lost not only their husbands and fathers, but also their income. That is why the Lord instructs his people. In James chapter 1, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Here in Biddulph, we can extend our care beyond our doors. Indeed, we often do. And in this country, we're not, fortunately at the moment, overwhelmed with orphan children. But neither are we exempt. But we certainly have close links with people who do spend their lives trying to improve the lot of orphans. For example, Alison Talbot, whom we... Uh, is our Crosslinks partner, is a paediatric doctor by profession, but also she's on the trust committee of an orphanage in Kenya where support is given to the relatives to keep their families at home. So the money goes to aunts, uncles, grandparents to keep the children within a home, but then they attend a school during the week and their family can afford to have them home at weekends. And that's just one of many, many examples. Of course, African countries, as other parts of the world, do suffer parental deaths through severe illness and epidemics, more than we are known to do. But closer to home, we hear the effects of war in Ukraine. And we also have refugees and asylum seekers not to mention the needy in our own land. We encourage evangelism in mission, but we must also place an emphasis on supporting compassion and mercy projects. This is because people do not care how much you know unless they know how much you care. If we want to influence people for Christ, as Tabitha clearly did, then we need to use our gifts willingly and joyfully to help them. Many of the widows of Joppa were walking round in clothes made by Tabitha. She became a person of importance in the church because she found fulfilment in and focused her serving in doing what she was good at. She realized her potential. Are we? Are we in any way serving Jesus by sowing for him 
or whatever your talent. What will your legacy be? Tabitha's legacy was sewing for Jesus. Now about that time she became sick and died. And when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men and urged him, Please come at once. And so Peter came. Hastily he went. They clearly believed that Peter might be able to help. And there is one ability God covets among, most, among us, and that ability Peter displayed. It was not sociability, not compatibility, not accountability, or adaptability, or even reliability. The greatest ability is availability. He came at once. If we don't make ourselves available to God, no matter what kind of ability we have, it is of no value. Ability without availability is a liability to God. And what does availability mean? It means placing oneself totally and absolutely, completely at God's disposal for him to do anything and everything he wants to do in us, through us, with us, for us, when he chooses. In this story, Peter was available, and God uses him mightily. Peter was able and available. He came right away, and when he entered the room where they had laid Tabitha, the weeping widows surrounded him. They showed him the clothes that she had made for them. Tabitha was irreplaceable. She was one kind, one of a kind, and they deeply missed her. But don't confuse irreplaceable with being indispensable. They're not the same. Apostle Paul taught in Timothy, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of my many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. She herself, none of us, is irreplaceable. But the deeds that we do can be passed on. We can show by example. We can act by example. And this is how the apostles obeyed Jesus' instruction to make disciples, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is why he promised them and us to be with us until he returns. In that sense, none of us should be indispensable. If you are more dependent on anyone more than you were a year ago, then you're not following Jesus. Being indispensable is not the same as being irreplaceable. We are each unique. There'll be, never be another you or another me, thankfully, we might say. In that sense, the lesson from these verses is that we should value one another, just as the church in Joppa valued Tabitha. And we shouldn't wait until someone has died to express our appreciation. Tabitha was irreplaceable, but she wasn't indispensable. She is described as a faithful disciple and I believe that means she motivated other women to sew and make clothes for the poor. So when she died, the ministry did not cease, but flourished and expanded. And that was the greatest le legacy of Tabitha, despite her loss. But that was not going to happen, at least not yet. Because thirdly, we see 
Peter sent them all out of the room. He got down on his knees, turned towards the dead woman and said, Tabitha, get up. And seeing Peter, she sat up. She took, he took her by the hand and helped her to her, her feet. <clears throat> A good disciple follows their master, and that is what Peter did. Puts me very strongly in mind of the raising of, Lazarus, uh, of Jairus' daughter. And how must Peter have felt in this recorded um, activity, event? He'd watched Jesus' ministry firsthand, and suddenly it was for him to do. And he followed very closely, according to this, the way that Jesus acted. And how many of us have trained in some way and had people to rely on and to report to, and then suddenly, one day, you're on your own. And how frightening can that be? How nerve-wracking. A day, first day in front of a class of children. Your first day in front of a patient. Your first day in a shop. Your first day doing anything. But God was with him. Jesus was with him. Peter simply copied what he saw the Lord do in a similar situation when he raised a little girl back to life. Like Jesus, Peter therefore asked everyone to leave the room. Like Jesus, he took her by the hand and said, Tabitha, get up. And like Jesus, the Lord answered Peter's prayer and raised Tabitha from the dead. And the Bible mentions only seven people who were raised from the dead. And Tabitha is the only adult woman among them. And if you notice the end of the passage, many came to believe in the Lord as a result. The life, the death and the resurrection of Tabitha helped spread the good news of the life, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. An author wrote, What's that in your hand? The Lord had asked Moses long ago. He answered, A rod. Go and work with that rod, God said, and you will be my servant. If God had asked Tabitha the same question, she would have replied, A needle and thread. Then he would have shown her how these were precisely the instruments with which she could serve him. What do you have in your hands this morning? If God could use Moses with something as simple as a staff and Tabitha with something as basic as a needle, what might he use in your hands? What gifts has the Lord entrusted with to you? And what is he calling you to do with them? Each of us should use what gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. I came across this poem which reminded me of the Bible Society book, giving books to Ukraine. And Alison told us the other day in conversation at prayer group that in the Ukraine there is a member of the Bible Society who fills his boot, car boot, with bread and Bibles because the Ukrainians have lost everything and they're crying out for Bibles. So as he delivers the bread, he also delivers adult and children Bibles to those people that are crying out for it. And I came across this poem which, in a way, speak, spoke to me of the same and for what we've just said. What do you do for Christ each day, a faithful Christian said. And I replied, I drive a truck and fill the stores with bread. He said, I know of your bread route, but that is not the thing. I mean, what do you do each day for Jesus Christ the King? 
I said, but I believe a man can work in such a way that selling bread is work for Christ, a sacrament each day. Once more the man inquired, but sir, if this is not unfair, what do you do for Christ each day, like witnessing and prayer? I said, work is my best witness and selling bread to them. It's like a prayer in Jesus' name. I drive my truck for him. Tabitha began a movement that spread well beyond her community. She has inspired literally millions of women and men to use whatever gift they have received to serve others. May God inspire us to use whatever gift he has given us for his glory today. Amen. Because I was at the front of church this morning, I happened to see an exchange between Janet and, was it Jean? Yes. Um, and it was of squares. I just thought it really appropriate if we just show this. Can I just tell them? And Janet, use the microphone. Oh, yeah. Will you tell us what it's for? Yes. Um, most of you know that my husband, David, um, is at the Methodist Church, and they were having an appeal for the Ukraine, and anyone who had a talent could knit or sew, could they all come together and knit blankets. Um, so <laughs> we've done both, we've knit and we've sewn. And a couple of um, friends from the church, Norman and Sue Millard, they have a business that they have a, a large truck. So. Uh, earlier on in the year, they took 96 full-size blankets across the border to Poland uh, to give to the refugees. So we're still knitting, and if anyone has a talent and wants to get back to me, if you can knit squares and sew them up, it's such a blessing. And they're really heavy, they're keeping people warm overnight. So I think this sermon this morning has been so appropriate, and what little talents I've got I just hope that, you know, it, it's been put to you. So, God bless everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Janet. I'm sorry for jumping on you, but I, I just thought it seemed uh, appropriate. Um, we can't, as um, Jill said, we can't all sew. I certainly can't knit. Well, not, I, I can, but it's, um, it looks unbelievable at the end result. So, I don't knit. Let's just continue asking that question of ourselves. What can we do for Jesus as we sing 687, 687? Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. 687.
Would you turn with me in the Green Service Group to page 22 and at section 2. Whatever we do for Jesus comes out of our faith in God, and so we declare our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to sit down, and Reg is going to come and lead us in prayer. God is always ready to hear our prayers, so let us be still and pray to him now. We ask you, Lord, to bless and guide all who share the good news in the service of Christ. We pray for our church in and the well-being of all here at St. Lawrence's. Father, we thank you for all who have helped us to pray and to understand something of your love and power. We ask your blessing for all who teach and minister in your name. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to inspire and strengthen them with the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for calling for Will to be our new next vicar. We look forward to welcoming him to Biddle sometime in August, along with his wife, Rachel, and children, Beth and Dan, knowing, Lord, that you have blessed Will with a talent for making music. So we also look forward to hearing examples of that talent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all areas of your world which are torn apart by violence and hatred, by famine and disease, by race and religious differences. We pray for all who are fighting against evil for goodness, truth and justice. We pray that all leaders and heads of government may take wise advice and act responsibly for the good of all. We pray for Christians in all parts of your world who are persecuted for their faith. Christians in Nigeria, Pakistan, Uganda, Libya, Tanzania, Syria, China, and in many other countries, are being murdered, tortured, forced to leave their homes and jobs, persecuted for witnessing to your truth in word and in deed. Make them aware of your presence, Lord. Keep them firm in their faith. Give them joy through hope and fill them with your love. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for you, Lord, with grateful thanks for those who first introduced us to Jesus and for those who have helped us along our spiritual journey. We pray for all Christians in all nations. May they grow in faith and in prayer. We pray for all who don't yet know Jesus, those in our local community, in our country, and throughout the world. But especially, Lord, we pray for those in our own families, those amongst our friends and our neighbours who don't yet know the joy of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of our families. We pray for our children and young people. As they grow, protect them from evil and strengthen them in faith. We pray that wherever families are struggling to stay together and wherever there are ongoing arguments and family feuds, we ask for tranquility and harmony. Wherever children are unwanted, unloved, in danger, neglected or abused, we ask for your protection and help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who cry out for rest and relief, for all who are carrying terrible burdens that are weighing them down, for those whose poverty denies them the chance of healing. We pray for your help and healing wherever people ache with pain and sorrow, loneliness or fear. We ask you to bless them in their need and surround them with your love. In a moment of silent prayer, knowing that you are aware of what is in our hearts, Lord, we name those whom we know to be in need of your healing touch. We ask you, Lord, to ease their pain and heal the damage done in mind or body, be present with them through the support of family and friends. Fill them with the warmth of your love now and always and bless them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those approaching death and for all who's, who counsel the dying and the bereaved. We pray that those who have died will know the joy of eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And now, shall we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Whatever we do for Jesus, we do it for the glory of God. We're going to sing now our closing hymn 777. To God be the glory for great things he has done in our lives and for us, for our church and in answer to our prayers. Let's give God the glory. 777.
would you like to sit down? <clears throat> Hopefully everybody's had a notice sheet. Can I um, point out the fact that at the back of church there are some uh, posters, um, little handouts for anyone that, any children that you might know who would be interested in coming to Vibes. As we've been saying in our notices, Vibes is back again. It's great to be looking forward to that. And the notice is only put, thanks to uh, Shuff, on the website. I don't know if that's how it happens, but we've had three children who have already registered. So hopefully the community is ready to go. I'm hoping we have more than three. Otherwise, they're going to be, it won't be a one-on-one. -on -one. It'll be a one-on-10 or 12 people, but I'm sure we will. So if you know any children nearby, take one of the leaflets and uh, pass it on to them. Can I remind you that this coming Wednesday, it's Open Cafe. Do come and join us for tea, coffee and cake and an opportunity to have fellowship together. Would you turn with me, please, to page 23 in the Green Book? I'm sorry, I should have asked, are there any more notices? No, okay. Uh, page 23. And section one, words for us to say together. Be with us, O God, as we go out in your name. May the lips that have sung your praises always speak the truth. May the ears that have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives, as well as our worship, be always pleasing to you. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <clears throat>